In this video, Shamath discussed the greatest opportunity in the investing world today, as the world has undergone a tremendous change in the last few decades, and this change is driven by central banks moving towards zero interest rates. This shift has led to a world where nonprofits and government are no longer the most productive way of moving things forward. Instead, technology companies have taken over and they are the leading edge of the sword. So, we will explore why it is essential to understand and take advantage of this opportunity. We will discuss two big trails of breadcrumbs that you should follow to be successful in the next 25 years. These trails are related to the marginal cost of energy generation and the use of technology to build a business. We will also talk about how you can embrace capitalism and technology to be socially progressive and make a positive impact on the world. So let's dive into the video and explore this exciting opportunity together. The biggest thing that's happened in the world today um, that has caused um, all of this upheaval that you see has been um, central banks moving to zero interest rates. Let me just explain this for a moment. If you looked back in the world in the 60s and 70s and 80s, you had incredible coordination. So if there was a big problem, even starting in World War II actually, you had huge problems. You had to invent incredible technologies. There was this cooperation and it was largely led by governments first. Um, and then all of these other organizations would fall out from beneath it. But that was in a world where the economy was basically one where there were checks and balances and capitalism was allowed to play itself out, right? There were winners and there were losers and we did not shy away from it because that was politically incorrect. Today, that's not true. You are not allowed to have losers. Everybody has to be a winner. Everybody gets to touch the soccer ball. Everybody gets to score a goal. No company should ever go out of business. Every theoretical sector of the economy could be subject to a bailout. And all of that was made possible because when we broke the glass in 2008, in this great financial crisis, we took rates to zero. And instead of taking it back, we abandoned it. And so we stopped cooperating. But what's interesting about that is that that was the same time that technology companies just completely transcended every other company. Because it was a thing where you could still have truth. You cannot hide from the fact that Tesla is a better car. You cannot hide from what an iPhone is. Does anybody know the difference between airline A versus airline B? I'm sure you could give me a very complicated balance sheet example, but there are no differences. You know, pick a, a CPG company, pick an insurance company, pick a bank. These are all sort of like monolithically the same. Tech companies are not. They are unique. Every single one is unique. Some are winners, some are losers, and it's very clear where the winners are and where the losers are. So what I would basically say is nonprofits and government used to be a very productive way of moving things forward. It doesn't work today in a world of at or near zero rates or in this world today, the hangover of that. You have to go work in a technology company and you have to use technology to build a business because there is no problem that you cannot solve that technology won't be the leading edge of the sword. And by doing it, there's it's impossible to not make money. I dare you to find a technology business that has improved the world that has not made millionaires and centimillionaires and decamillionaires and billionaires. It's just not possible. So, you know, if you want to be socially progressive and do something interesting, you have to embrace capitalism and you have to embrace technology and you have to do something. If you want to really figure it out, um, I'll give you two big trails of breadcrumbs that you should follow. Um, and, I, and I've said this now a little bit redundantly, but I'll just keep saying it because it, it is it is the most important thing in the next 25 years. So I don't care what you like or don't like. You need to pivot your career to one of these two things. Um, if you want to be successful. Number one is that the marginal cost of energy generation is going to zero. Okay? You have wars, you have death, you have all kinds of geopolitics that pivot around natural resources and energy. What happens to a peace dividend in the world when you don't have to fight for that stuff because you have abundant energy and the cost of making that energy is effectively zero and it has no impact into the uh, ecology of the world? Well, we're about to find that out. And when you take the cost of energy to zero, now it unlocks all kinds of other problems 
that before were impossible to tackle because it would be too expensive. So that's trend number one. Trend number two is that we have shifted the ability to calculate and solve any computational problem away from a CPU to these things called GPUs and ASICs and FPGAs. That's all fancy language for things are getting easier and easier to solve. Okay, there's a company in Silicon Valley called OpenAI. You may have played with their tools called Wally or GPT-3 or DALI, sorry, and GPT-3. What are these things? These things are massive leaps in AI. Okay, these are models where you can type in something like, uh, and then one of you guys should do it now. We can throw it up here like, you know, Wharton class of geniuses in the Renaissance style. Those are just words and they'll translate it into an image. It's incredible, incredible technology. Okay. Or GPT-3 where you can have a language model now where it can auto write a book and you will not know that it was not a human. As we continue with the video, Shamath indicates the market by contrasting it to a train moving up and down a hill. He also discusses discount rates and interest rates and how they affect businesses and startups. And wait, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do subscribe now, that red button won't bite you. Think of the market as a train. And sometimes the train is going up a hill, sometimes the train is going down a hill, and sometimes the train is going off of a cliff. But it's important to observe how the boxcars are arranged. The boxcar at the front are these computer trading algos. Okay, And those algos really dictate the early momentum and shape of markets and vol and how things move. Then the next are the hard money long onlys and you know hedge funds, like us humans that are running money. And then at the back of the train is retail. And I'm just kind of like giving you the three basics high level summary. And if you look over and over repeatedly over time, if you follow CTAs and then you follow the positioning of hedge funds, you can sort of see where markets go. And if you take that set of information and you marry it, so you do a join with where the volatility index is, you get a decent directional sense of what's going to happen. Again, this is not advice. This is just like go and do this research for yourself. I think that people don't understand that um, a lot of these behaviors were levered to zero interest rates. So if now interest rates are 4 or 5 or 6%, the most important thing as a business leader you should understand is what the implications to your business are. And so, you know, look, uh, I don't know if you saw Google's earnings today. They did a horrible job. Um, and part of it, though, was that they absolutely released a chart which showed that they had hired an incremental 36,000 people to do such a horrible job. And so they're going to be under a lot of pressure. You know, our friend, my friend Brad Gerstner put out a letter to Facebook basically asking them to cut 20% of their staff. Um, it's really important to be financially numerate. And so if you're a good manager of a business and you actually understand that the discount rate actually affects your terminal valuation, which means that there's certain things you can spend on, certain things you can't, and that growing at 50% is actually better than growing at 150% if that 150% growth is unprofitable. Nobody ever thought that that was true. But it's because we never had a rate environment that forced us to learn these lessons. 